when you look for yourself online, what do you look like? How are you going to get found by people who are searching for your services? That's right. And what if you don't like what you find when you search for yourself? What do you do? Hi, I'm Charlie Seymour, Jr. And I'm Dr. Mark Koss. And thanks for coming to this question and answer video. But make sure you stay tuned to the end because we have a very special offer for you that you want to check out. We certainly do. So go ahead and watch. We'll see you in the end. So the question is, are you present on the social media sites? How many articles show up, podcasts, Facebook posts, tweets, things like that? We've talked about it. We'll continue to talk about it. I like, again, that analogy. I'm a, a, a suburban guy, so this works really well with the suburbs of how do you talk to your neighbor across the backyard fence? Are we having a friendly conversation? Um, I have a lot of friends on uh, Facebook who do have doctors that they want to find out about or a movie they want to go, whatever it is, how do you respond to them? I had a friend the other day with sinus problem. I've had a little bit of that myself and I suggested some of the over-the-counter things. She had 37 different people making suggestions. Right. So that sort of thing is now all being searched by Google and all appearing, starting to appear now in the, the rankings and the Google searches of what's going on. So you want to be as open and as friendly and as helpful as you can be there. I'm not a doctor. I don't play one on the internet, but I was helping out in as friendly a way as we can. Well, but you know, you, you're semi-jokingly talking about something that's really important. And I know I have this dialogue all the time with people in my own profession. I mean, psychologists and a lot of other professions are very uncomfortable about social media right now because they haven't figured out how to be on social media. The, the assumption is that social media is sort of this wild and crazy place that's going to make you look unprofessional or that is going to you know, be where you post the party pictures from last weekend. And so they're assuming that Facebook or Twitter has to be all about intimate personal details. Yeah, right. Well, that's all about how you map this out and create it. So the point is you have to be on social media. And if you're not, you're really tying one hand behind your back in terms of being present because it is the public square. You know, your sinus example is perfect. I mean, it's where you have a public conversation and other people can chime in and say, hey, did you know about this? So you've got a, that sort of crowdsourcing, they call it now. You can crowdsource anything by having lots of people overhear something and contribute. So you can be very professional on social media. You're not going to engage one-on-one -on -one with a patient and give you know, confidential information. or no. you're, not, you're just simply not going to do that. You're going to use common sense. You can put out general advice. Think of it as having your own little television show where you're, you're a, an expert guest. I mean, you can generally comment about, well, these are some of the current trends that are going on in the, in the treatment of depression. I mean, I can say that perfectly well as a psychologist without feeling like I'm doing something unprofessional. It's very professional, right? But the other thing we want to see, let's say we have found Dr. Mark and we go to his personal profile on Facebook. No. We want to find out if he's a nice guy. Well, That's not, a lot but, of what it but is. But not to mention the fact that, of course, you can have the best of both worlds if you want. I mean, my wife is a psychologist also. She's on Facebook, but she uses it exclusively for personal. Well, she's got the highest level of right. security settings there. You can only so find her name. Down. Right. So we choose how open or closed. And so she and I are great examples. She's completely open. I mean, sorry, she's completely closed. And the only people that connect to her are her true friends, whereas I use it as a public way of sort of being a presence online. So I have all of my security settings wide open and my friends really are in quotation marks. I don't know who half of them are. They're just a network of people with shared interests that I've connected with. Right. So you choose the boundaries and you act accordingly whether you're in a public place or a private place. So, Dr. Mark Kosman, Charlie Seymour Jr. You can get to us on Facebook or Twitter. Now, now that you've seen or us YouTube, or YouTube, Twitter, wherever or we are. Join us on social media. and Because <coughs> we, we're there. We'll we show use it you a lot. an example of how you can be on social media. Exactly. Wow, you were pretty good in that, Dr. Mark. You weren't too shabby yourself. Well, thanks very much. And that was one of 25 questions and answers that we have for you. That's right. We spent a whole lot of time. We really want you to get found online. So we went through 25 of these. This was just a sample. And we want to give it all to you. Well, where can they come and get all that information? Well, getfound101.com is the place to go. Sounds like a smart idea. So join us over there, getfound101.com, and get all 25 of these, getfound101.com. Thank you.